1999, Sally Clark, a lawyer, a wife, a mother of two, was convicted of murdering her two baby boys. Christopher, who was 11 weeks when he died, and Harry, who was eight weeks old when he died. Although baby Christopher's death was reported as a lung infection by the examiner, after the second baby Harry died, it was changed to suffocation. Mrs. Clark was sentenced to life in prison because the UK does not have the death penalty. She appealed her case after a year because the prosecution was very suspicious, but she lost. She was released after three years of serving the sentence because the prosecution's, pre prosecution's case continued to get holes in it. And she was found innocent and let, uh, and let go. But this could have all been avoided if the experts had just understood some simple statistical mathematics. They made an error, and Sally's family suffered, and Sally suffered the most. With flaky evidence, and not a good case in the first place, how did the prosecution achieve a conviction of Sally Clark, a woman who had already suffered beyond the imagination by losing two infants, all of her children. Her defense bankrupt her family and her husband. They had to sell the fam family home in England. How could this have happened? The answer? Misuse of statistics. Sir Roy Meadows, expert witness for the prosecution and a pediatric, pediatric expert, testified that the odds of one family losing two babies to cot death or in other words, unexplained baby death, was 1 in 73 million. Let's see how Mr. Meadows came up with this figure. The odds of caught death in England, according to an actual statistic, is actually 1 in 1,300. So 1 in 1,300 families suffers an infant death for no apparent reason. However, the good Mr. Meadows modified the probability to 1 in 8,500 because the Clarks were financially well off and did not smoke. To calculate the probability of two independent events, such as two babies dying in the same family, is the probability of one event times the probability of the next event. And that's the probability that both things can happen. So here's the first problem in the calculation of 1 over 8,500 times 1 over 8,500 does equal 1 over 73 million. But the actual odds of having one caught death is 1 in 1,300. But the odds of having a second, if you'd had one, is 1 out of 100. Which means that people that have had one caught death are prone to having a second one. This is called conditional probability. It's not well understood by a lot of people including doctors and experts. Conditional probability means the fact that one thing has happened means that another thing is more likely or less likely to happen now. For example, what is the probability or the likelihood, same thing, that you will slip and fall today on the sidewalk? If you're not an accident prone person like some people you might know, then the probability is very low. Now, what about if it's been snowing, and the snow on the ground freezes and turns to ice? The probability of slipping now goes up. And so the probability of slipping changed because of something else that's happened, namely the snow and the ice. So when the probability of one event is dependent on another event, we call this conditional probability. The events are not really independent, because one affects the other. Sally Clark's case was viewed as a non-conditional probability problem, where the chances of a first and second caught death were calculated as two first caught deaths. 
To accurately calculate the probability of two infants dying in the same family of caught death, you would have to use this formula. 1 over 1300 times 1 over 100, which is 1 over 130,000. That translates to about five families per year to have caught deaths, not one every 100 years. Quite a difference. Although this is still pretty rare, it's a long way from 1 over 73 million. That's like winning the lottery. You might consider that, with even these odds, someone does always win. It happens, doesn't it? So the jury and the media became focused on that 1 over 7,300 million figure, even though it was completely wrong. People tend to believe experts, even non-experts, when they use statistics, because most of us don't understand the numbers well enough to question them. After that statistical uh, group in the UK challenged the misuse of statistics in the courtroom, many other women were released from prison, perhaps reducing their heartbreak, but of course never removing it. Sally Clark endured the most heartbreak of any person could ever have, and that is the loss of her children. But Sally lost two and then was in prison because of the misuse of statistics and probability belief that experts know more than we do. Because the public does not like to learn about statistics and relies on experts to tell us how things are, and because many experts do not really understand statistics and probability, tra tragedies will continue to happen. The only way to stop these kind of tragedies is to become educated in statistical methods and probability ourselves. Learn to think for yourself. The experts are not who you think they are or who they want you to think they are. Learn the statistic methods in your class. Know the material well, and you'll probably find your professor making mistakes. Everybody does, but very few are caught. <laughs> anyway, have fun, learn statistics and probability, and don't forget Sally Clark in your prayers. I'm Doug Edwards. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.